I've almost finished my diagram. There's something missing from it. What's missing? The shading, very good. The actual thing you're trying to work out. The reason why I've left off from doing that is because this shape here that's been shaded is actually not just one shape. It's the difference between two shapes, but they're not shown. Okay? So this is why we call them compound areas. If you think back to like composite shapes and that kind of thing, it's like this is made up of multiple pieces. right? You can get that by finding the right pieces in here. Okay? So I'm now going to highlight the pieces for you. If you have another color on you, uh, or pencils that you can shade with or something like that, then you can do this alongside me. If you look at this shape without anything shaded, okay, I have a part of this area that's underneath the parabola. It's this part. This part here is underneath the parabola. It's an area under a curve, which means we can find it by what technique? Integration. That's what this whole topic is about, which is very convenient because in this case, it's an awkward shape. It's not a nice, like, there's not, there's not a straight line. It's not even a semicircle. So I have to use integration to do that. Now, look at this black area, the one I've shaded. How are we going to form an integral that will find the size of that area? I'll say integral. OK, very good. Just before you go on, Adi, I'm looking for boundaries here because it's an area that starts somewhere and ends somewhere. So Nadi, you can go on again, negative one. Okay, now if I went to zero, I'd get this part here, which should be fine. And then I could do this part over here. However, notice that like, I can think of this just as one area. I know it's two pieces, but they're both underneath the same curve. Do you agree? So I could stop at zero and then pick up again, but I can just go all the way to the end. What is the end? It's 4. You can read it off that x value there. So I'm going to go from negative 1 to 4. Okay. That's the boundaries. Can someone else pick up from where Nadine left off and tell me what to write after that? What's the curve I'm underneath? x squared, right? There's the equation right there. That's why they handed it to you. x, really need a refill, dx. Okay. Why did I say dx? What does that signify, apart from the thing that you just always see after integrals? Oh, uh, no, I wanted black. I'm kind of blue in a second. Sorry, I'm picky. Uh, dx means with respect to? With respect to x, for two reasons. It's there. That's the variable. Thank you. I'm spoiled. Um, Got to be careful. I'm going to get used to this. Uh, <laughs> that's the variable I'm interested in, but there's a, there's a geometric reason why it's x. There's a geometric reason why it's x. It's a function of x, and which axis am I going to? I'm going to the x-axis. Later on, you're going to not go to the x-axis. You're going to sometimes go to the y-axis. And that won't be dx. It'll be dy. OK, good. So we know what this thing is. It's the area that I've just shaded. Okay. Well, to get this one, the one that they actually want, right? it's the difference between this area and which other one. Can you see it? It's the whole area underneath it. What's the shape of it? You can tell me. What. It's got, it starts with a T. It's a trapezium. OK, so I'm going to try and uh, do it like this. I'll do it sideways. So that trapezium, right? If you work out the area underneath that straight line, what's its equation? 3x plus 4. You work out its area underneath that. It doesn't just stop at the parabola, right? Because when you write the integral to do with that, it's still going to start at negative 1, still going to go to 4. The integrand is 3x plus 4, but what are you going to put after that? You're going to put dx, which means go to the x-axis. So it just goes right down the bottom. Okay? So the area they want is the difference between these. Right? It's going to be this guy, take away, come back. Oh no, I forgot which one's which. Cross your fingers. That, um, that parabola one you told me before. You see that? It's the difference. Okay? Now I've actually come up with an expression that's the real area I want. So I'm actually going to call this capital A for area. Okay? Now, properties of definite integrals. Think back to last year. and This is going to be reaching back a little bit for some of you. Properties of definite integrals. If you have two definite integrals and their boundaries are the same, you see that? The negative 1 and 4. I can combine these into one piece. You can combine them to one. So I'm going to do that. 
instead of writing two integrals, which both have the same boundaries, I'm just going to write one integral that shares those boundaries. So I've got 3x plus 4. And I heard it before, someone suggested it, they preempted me. I'm going to subtract this x squared. Take away what's underneath the parabola. Like so. Okay? Two integrals into one. Do you have to write this intermediate line? The short answer is no. But I'm going to encourage you to do that because this shows me that I, I can see what you're thinking. Here's an area, here's another area. I subtract them. It's an important process for your brain to go through rather than I just write this magic line that will give me the correct answer in a second. Okay? From here, I reckon you guys could take over. right? You can find the primitive of that. You can evaluate it at your upper and lower boundaries, get a number out. Why don't you go ahead and do that, see what you come up with.